Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. You know something, friend? You look lousy with that gun in your back. Of course, if you're trying to cure your lumbago the hard way, forget I told you. However, if that gat's starting to make a bad impression, why not remove it the easy way? Let George do it. You'll get rid of it or your money back. George doesn't mind taking chances. He figures the odds this way. If he does a job, he's money ahead. If he doesn't, you won't be around to collect anyway, so why worry? On the other hand, everybody doesn't have your problem. Take old Mr. Stengel, for instance. To look at him as he drives down a backcountry road, you'd never think he had a care in the world. Oh, carry me back to old Virginia. That's where they... Hey, what? Hey! Hey, hey, you! Get away from there, lady! Look out! And get away from that railing! Don't you know there's a river down there? What do you think? Oh, let go of me! Hey! Oh, holy smoke. You're Mrs. Blair, ain't you? Who'd you think I'd be? A water sprite? <laughs> well, 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 I'm sorry, but, gee, I, I seen you there by the railing. I, I mean, it's a good 35-foot drop, you know, and this bridge ain't been repaired for years. I know, I know. And you're out delivering milk. No, 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 no. Don't look over. You'll get dizzy. Well, I, I sure didn't mean to offend you in any way. It's my view, as it is yours, isn't it? Here. Here I'll give you a ride over to your place if you like. Well, let go of me. Oh, I'm sorry. You frightened me, that's all. I was just standing here, and you frightened me. No, no, thank you. I'll walk. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Holy smoke. thing. I'm sure glad Mrs. Blair didn't jump. Think of the repercussions if you'd been fishing that day. Would have been awful tough to explain to Mr. Blair that you just caught his wife. On the other hand, it's easy as pie for my friend here to explain almost anything. If you don't believe me, just lend an ear. That's using your head, pal. Now let's see if old Mr. Stengel used his. Well, what do you know? He just walked into George Valentine's office. I know it's none of my business, You but... thought the woman was trying to jump. Is that it, Mr. Stengel? Well, I'll tell you, Miss Brooks. I don't want to commit myself. I don't know. Then why did you call me? Oh, now, don't chase me around the barn so much, Mr. Valentine. I don't want to start any excitement, but they're nice people. Husband's a wonderful fella. Nicest guy you'd ever care to meet. Okay, okay. Tell me some more about Mrs. Blair. Well, Mr. Valentine, she really ain't been around here so much. More of a city type, you know what I mean? At least they're not joiners or bridge players. The places are pretty far apart out here. I thought she was away someplace. Where's uh, Mrs. Blair been, do you know? Uh, search me. It's none of my business. You apparently liked her husband. Uh, why didn't you call him after this happened? Well, I did, but there weren't no answer. Then after I called you, I noticed his tractor out there. We're just working the field over, that's all. But by then, I figured I might as well keep my mouth shut. Mr. Blair's a farmer like you are? Oh, no, 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 no. Artist. You know, when them fellas paints pictures? Pretty good ones, too. Only he's not so good on cows. Draws them all with straight line. Emmett Blair? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's the one. That's his name. I wouldn't be surprised. He's got a reputation. Yes, he has. Owns a nice farm. Really works it, too. Oh, he's a wonderful fella, he is. He don't associate much, and he's kind of sad looking at times. I don't speak his language. Maybe, but... Uh, well, he speaks mine. Oh, uh, Mr. Stengel, the point is you don't want to offend this guy, Blair, but you're curious. You don't know him very well, and you know his wife less. But today you saw her very unhappy and maybe thinking about suicide. No, 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 then... hold on, hold on. I don't believe in jumping at conclusions. But there's been things that, well, I don't want nothing bad to happen, that's all. There's been things like what? Well, I'm not a gossip. But in the past, well, it was something the local doctor told me once. Always stuck in my mind. Oh, but uh, I'm not going to tell you. 
That's up to him. Doc Durfee. I uh, don't want Doc thinking that uh, I shot my mouth off with ethical secrets. All right, Mr. Stengel. You just want us to look into it. We will. We'll call Dr. Fee. But in the meantime, I'm going to play it straight. What do you mean? Well, see something you don't understand? Why not go find out? Come on, Angel. We're going to call on the Blairs. No, no, no. It, it couldn't have been my wife. Stengel must be mistaken. You say your telephone's upstairs, Mr. Blair? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, yes, Miss Brooks. Uh, go right ahead. Uh, turn to the left. Oh, thank you. Mistaken, Mr. Blair? Stengel's met her before. Uh, but my wife's not here now. In fact, she won't be here until later this evening. I'm going to meet her train. Where's Mrs. Blair been? Well, I scarcely think that's important to you. Uh, see here... Uh, why didn't the old fool go after her if, if she was so upset? He said he did afterwards, but couldn't find her. She'd run off toward the highway anyhow. Oh, well, the bus has run. Yeah. Now, of course, she could be... Oh, no, no, this is ridiculous. Well, why is it ridiculous, Mr. Blair? What? Well, my wife just isn't the type to, to commit suicide, Mr. Valentine. Well, it might not have been that. Oh, incidentally, Stengel did try to find you, but you were out in the field. Yes, yes, I, uh, I've i been out cultivating all day. Uh, excuse me, will you please? I, I want to get into that desk. Mm. Oh, sure, Mr. Blair. Of course, I, I appreciate you coming over about this, you know. I don't understand it, but I... Well, I stopped to talk to a kid coming up the lane. He was under the impression your wife was here yesterday. Uh, I don't blame you for your curiosity. I... No, no, Mary wasn't here. In fact, she's seldom been here in the past ten years. Which is not very important either. No, he, he must have noticed Cecile, that's all. Cecile? Yes, I, I'm an artist. Artists have models. Well, go on. Say something nasty. Why should I? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm awfully sorry. Forgive me. I am just upset. Cecile's a very lovely person. A very close friend. Nothing more. Very few people understand. I, I've been working on a portrait for the past week. But Cecile's gone now. Oh, yes. Here, here we are. It's a phone number. You suppose Miss Brooks is through yet with that phone? Yes, I what? am. Huh? Oh, well, uh, will you excuse me then? I, I want to phone the number where my wife's been visiting for the The past... Clearview Rest Home. Yes. What else did you find out, Angel? She went there six weeks ago because of a nervous breakdown. Now, see here, what is this? What right have you I've to... I've been talking to Dr. Durfee. You've what? George, that thing that Mr. Stengel was hinting at was that Dr. Durfee found some poison here once in this house. What? But I've only... Uh, he wouldn't tell me much more, but he used the word homicidal about the situation stop here. Stop it. Stop it. Now listen to me, both of you. Durfee's a, a country quack. He doesn't... Situation here? He, oh, the, my wife, naturally. All right, since you've pried this far, we, we haven't been close for years, but I, I tried to do everything I could to help her, naturally, but they said at the rest home that Mary was perfectly all right, only... Only a breakdown. I, I, I mean, she... Well, this absurd situation goes back years and years, and I... I oh, get out, will you? What's the use? I, I want to call that place and find out if Let she's... Let me the... call for you, Mr. Blair. What? I'm sorry I blurted out things like that, but I want you to show George your portrait. What? I bumped into the wrong room, I guess. This must be a lot worse than you think it is, because there's a painting upstairs of a woman... Oh, that... yes, yes, of course, Cecile. It's the one I just finished of her. And the canvas has been slashed to pieces. Oh, no. Oh, look at that. One of the best jobs I've ever done. You didn't slash it yourself. Why would I do that? Okay, okay. And you say the picture was all right when the model left? Yes. My wife, of course. Who else would do a thing like that? She never loved me. I doubt if I've loved her, but... Well, that's it. Jealous for the sake of jealousy. Is that why you sent the model away? No one else will ever have you, she said. I've been as patient as I could with her ridiculous emotional imaginings, her... Come on, I'll run out back and get the car. Huh? Well, Mary's obviously been here in the house, walked in and saw this portrait and slashed it. Well, let's get back up the highway. She must have gone someplace. Okay, go on ahead. I'll get Miss Brooks. All right, thanks. 
She left that Clearview place this morning, George. Oh. They thought she was coming here then directly. But she's perfectly all right, they say. She was, huh? I don't see how just a picture would be enough to upset her that bad. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I wonder if there's anything else around here to show what she did when... Shall I call Mr. Blair? No, no, let me get it. Hello? Hello, Emmett? Uh, no, this is George Valentine. I'm a friend of his. Is there a message you'd like to... Oh, well, this is Anne, Mrs. Blair's sister. Anne? Yes, I mean, I'm at the railroad station, and she's not here. But I haven't eaten, and I want to go to a hotel. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. A railroad station? Mr. Valentine, is my brother-in-law there, Emmett? You want to talk to him? No, no. Mary sent me this wire from Clearview several days ago asking me to come and meet her here at the train. But she wasn't on Yes, it. yes, I know. She apparently came earlier. Uh, what hotel were you talking about? Well, is anything wrong? Well, oh, the Plains Hotel, I guess. I have to eat first. I'm here with some friends. Okay, okay. I'll leave a message for you there. See you later. But what is it? Mary's all right, isn't she? In this telegram, she said she wanted me to be with her when she went out there to her home. She didn't want to go there alone. What should I do? I don't know, Anne. But don't worry. Now, my name's George Valentine, like I said. Remember it. Seems a little ridiculous to have called the sheriff's office. We want to find her, don't we? Well, yes, yes, of course. But if you hadn't stayed so long in the house, I... What kept you, anyway? Um, uh, nothing. Just getting a search started, that's all. Poor Mary. She's always been so... Listen. Yeah, somebody's horn stuck. Hey, that's the bridge up there, isn't Stengel. it? Stengel. That's Stengel's truck. It's just parked there. Yeah. Hey! Hey! Hey, what's the matter with you, Stengel? I saw your headlights. Afraid you'd turn off the other way. Wanted help. George, there's blood on his face and his clothes well, are... I'm all right. Scratched, that's all, but I twisted my ankle... Took me a half hour to get down there. Well, what happened? I tried to stop her. She was standing in the same place. I always drive out this time of night. Who? And, and I'm sorry, but by the time I crawled down there through the woods, over those rocks, current's too strong. Not hiding her hair over. Mary? She jumped. I tried to stop her. She screamed and she jumped. Come on. No, no, now there's no use, Mr. Valentine. Current's too strong. By this time, there's, well, there's a waterfall half a mile down. Oh, no. Oh, the poor thing. I don't understand it, but... Now it's happened, hasn't it? There was nothing anyone could do. Stengel saw her commit suicide. That's all there is to it. Suicide. Or a perfect murder. guess this goes to show you can't argue with a woman. Mrs. Blair made up her mind she was going to drown her sorrows even if it killed her. And it did. Of course, someone might have helped to prove her point. But I have a fellow right here who never needs help to prove his. Prove a point, pal. You know, there are a couple of angles to this case that don't add. First of all, how come old man Stengel was around every time Mrs. Blair took a notion to dunk herself in the drink? And what was he doing with all those scratches on his puss? Did Mrs. Blair do it, or had he been playing patty cake with a wildcat? And where does Mr. Blair fit in? If he could mix plowing with painting, he also might be able to blend money and mayhem. But who did he hire to push wifey off the trestle? All I know is that even if Blair couldn't paint a cow, he's a past master at throwing the bull. Speaking of bull, here's a prime specimen. Only this bull doesn't have horns. Oh, the fact is the case is now officially closed and I'm going home. But why is it closed, Lieutenant Johnson? Sheriff's office found the body down the river below the falls. Oh. Drowned further up, I suppose. It wasn't easy to even find her after she'd been over that falls. All those sharp rocks. Yeah, okay, the... skip it. I get the idea. I don't know. Women like that, maybe she's happier. Had a lot of funny notions all her life, apparently. Have you seen her husband? Stop by to tell him he's all right. 
Okay, so it doesn't upset him much. So what? They'd have been separated long ago if it hadn't been for her, for him trying to take care of her. Yeah, yeah, sure. Nice guy. Well, what's the matter with you? Oh, I don't know. Come on, Angel. Hey, where are you going? See that sister of hers that I talked to last night on the phone. I already met her. She's on her way downtown to the morgue with one of the boys. What can she do? What can she tell you? There just isn't any case to look into. Oh, sure, sure, Lieutenant. No case at all. But I'll bet five bucks you follow me out that door. I I don't know anything about them, really. I don't. It's been years since Mary and I... Yeah, now look, I, I know this hasn't been pleasant, Anne. I'm sorry, I can't help it. The doctor or somebody took me in there. Well, it's a horrible way to see a sister you haven't seen. She sent you a wire. She didn't want you to go back to her home alone. She didn't want to go back alone. Is that right? That's all she said. I don't know. I just assumed she still didn't feel very well and wanted some help. Why didn't you assume she was having trouble with her husband? Because I didn't know she was. Hadn't you even heard of a woman named Cecile? Who? Mr. Valentine, you talked strangely last night, and I didn't understand it. I know my brother-in-law has gone out with various women, but Mary knew that, too. Okay, okay. But I I want to take the bus out and see him. At least I've taken care of everything here at the coroner's office, and he ought to know that. I mean, is there any reason I shouldn't? No, there isn't. Huh? Go on, miss, and thanks a lot. Oh, now, wait a minute, Johnson. I'm just getting... Go on, go on. There's nothing more to be done. You'll just get all worked up sitting around here. Whatever you say, Lieutenant. Okay, okay. So I'm getting nowhere. That isn't any reason to barge in... His car is parked across the street. Come here. What? Look out the window. That green sedan over there. Blair? Coroner's office didn't realize there was another relative around, so they called him in. Just sitting there. But he's already been inside, don't you understand? While you were talking to the sister. He's waiting for her, I guess. Yeah? There she goes, but he doesn't stop her. Huh? Yeah. Doesn't call her. Doesn't do anything. Got his coat collar up. But he's watching her. Oh, now, look, I don't understand. Coroner's man said it was all Blair could do to stand up when he came out of the morgue. So what? Valentine, I've been thinking over everything you told me. Once that there was poison at the Blair house, and nobody ever knew who had it there, did they? Oh. Oh, so now you're getting the idea, huh? Hey, look, there she goes down the street. And still he sits. Sure, I know Mrs. Blair killed herself, but I wonder which one it was that was really weird in that family. If his wife was driven into a nervous break... Skip it, come on. Hey, you, you, wait a minute. Uh, Blair, just noticed you out here. What? I, uh... Oh, Valentine. Why don't you come back inside? Oh, and... Lieutenant. Oh, yes, yes. I Just sitting here for a moment. No, uh, no, I, I'm sorry. I have appointments to Your, keep. Your uh, <laughs> sister-in-law's in town. She was just up what? talking to us. Yeah. Oh, is that so? I, I mean, yes, yes, of course. I, I know. I Make up your mind what you're going to say. <laughs> well, what's the matter? Is he here? I'm not overparked in this place, am I, or something? What's the matter with you, Mr. Blair? I, I, I'm afraid I don't feel very well. It's nothing at What's all. What's the matter with your face? Nothing. I... All right. I've been crying. Isn't that all right with you? Crying? Or I suppose you're so used to experiences like this, you wouldn't expect a man to behave normally. Get out of my way. Hey, Mr. Look, Blair, wait. Leave me alone. Look out. You... How do you like that? What in the... I'm going to get that guy. He's nuts. Did you hear the way he... Yeah, was... sometimes murder can be so simple, can't it? What? You heard me. Murder. Well, go on. Catch him. Step on it. Me, I'll take a different direction. Valentine! I've just waked up to the fact there's liable to be another murder unless I can stop it in time. There's the turnoff, George. Yeah. Let's park it here a second. The bridge is only a couple of hundred yards. You think we got here in time? Sure, sure. But I want to look at something first. Well, if you take a bus, I suppose it stops at the intersection back there. That's right. And then it's only half a mile walk across the bridge to Stengels and Blair's. George, you could walk on the road. You don't have to walk. Just wanted to see the river, that's all. You can't hear the falls from here. No. Half a mile down. A couple of bends, I guess. 
Water looks deep under the bridge, doesn't it? Yeah. George, look. Mm. No, no, by the road. Walking from the highway. There she is. Oh, yeah. Come on, let's get back up there. Are you sure, George, that you figured out... I'm not sure of anything, Angel. Just don't want to take chances, that's all. But you didn't get any answer at that telephone number that I asked you to call before, and then... What's the matter? What are you stopping for? It's Ann, George. Aren't you going to stop her before she gets out on the bridge? Green sedan. Hmm? Sure. Sure, she came straight out. Only where is... Hey. George, there he is. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to hurt you. Wait a minute. Uh, I, I was coming to see you, Emma. Yes, I know. This is the place, isn't it? Emma, what's the matter with you? You don't have to ask that. Get away from me. I was coming to see you. Get away from no, me. Oh, wait a minute. Running won't do you any good. Come on, step on it. Stop, I tell you. Stop. I'll get you. No, no matter what. George. Emma, don't. Emma. And nothing will help you. No. You're going to die. No, like stop it. Like she did. No. Let go of her, Buster. No. Stop it. Take it easy, would you please? You're all right. I, I don't know what he was going to do. I was going to see him, but I don't know what he was going I to know, do. I know, I know. That was your mistake, lady. What? Yeah, the poor guy's out of his mind, practically. I suppose he might have thrown you over the edge. Get away from there. No, not too far down. Water's deep. You could swim, all right. Oh, don't get so near the edge. That's where Mary Take jumped. Take it easy now. Take it easy. Everything's all right. You know, Emmett's mistake here was to cry. What? Yeah, that's right. Pretty hard thing for a man to fake, too. George. Come on, let's get off this bridge. Well, don't worry. I'll come back for him. He's pretty well out, but he'll be in shape to wind this up in a hurry. What do you mean? You know what I mean. Miss Brooks calls Cecile's house in Los Angeles. Nobody answers. Cecile? Take it easy now. You're all right. Don't talk to me as though I'm... I know, I know. It was only a nervous breakdown. George, what in heaven's name are you talking about? Murder can be so simple, can't it? Big flash of temper. Big flash of jealousy. But Mr. Stengel saw Mary commit suicide. Oh, no, no. He saw Mary jump, Angel. But it was dark. He couldn't see her in the water. He couldn't see whether she swam or sank. No, no. But it's Emmett there who tipped it. Big, suspicious husband. Shook like a leaf when he went to the morgue. Cried. Really cried afterwards. Called Denver. I guess there really is a sister, Ann, isn't there? Of course there is. Who is still in Denver, right? <laughs> oh, no. All right, I'll make it real simple. Emmett Blair was in love, pretty hopelessly, I guess, with a girl named Cecile. He practically told me so. I should have believed him all along. Her picture was slashed by Emmett's wife, Mary, who came home unexpectedly too soon. It's Cecile's body that's at the morgue. What did you say, George? That's not true. That's what shocked Blair so, what tipped him off, what upset him so much he might have committed murder himself. Stop it! Stop yeah, it! Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's Cecile's body. And you're Emmett's wife. You're Mary Blair. <laughs> What's more, you kill Cecile. Oh, no! Those are mighty powerful words, George, and you better be ready to back them up. Right now, however, I would suggest you go get Mr. Blair back on his feet while my friend here gets some things off his chest. George said earlier that this was almost a perfect crime. What could be more perfect than to be able to bump yourself off and live to tell the tale? I wonder where Mrs. Blair slipped up. Or if you'll take that ice bag off your head, Emmett, maybe you could tell us. I didn't guess before I came to the morgue. How could I? Stengel had seen the whole thing and... Mr. Blair, Stengel saw it twice. That's where your wife got the idea. Because what he saw the first time was Mary on the bridge, just after she'd managed to shove Cecile over the rail. Yeah, she got her out there to do it, I guess, and then hit her with something. Because she knew what had happened to a body that went over the waterfalls down below. You mean identification would be almost impossible? Yeah. She had a very neat plan, all right. Once the big temper wore off, the crazy jealousy, she decided that she would identify the body, which she did, posing as Sister Anne. An identification which nobody would question. She thought you'd protect her, as always. Mary was a fine swimmer. Yeah, that's right. That's what happened the second time Stengel saw it. She realized before that he thought she was trying to kill herself. So why not capitalize on it? Wait until his return trip in the evening and dive over. In the dark, she could swim ashore and go back up to the highway before he'd get down to the river. Yes, perfect murder. 
She tried it before, you know. Trying to use poison on you, you mean? Yes, but I, I couldn't really believe it. It was my trouble, I suppose, never believing Mary was dangerous. It ended up with me almost committing murder. No, oh, no, you wouldn't have killed her. I know you didn't tell Johnson and me what you just discovered at the morgue, and I had to knock you down to stop you, but you wouldn't have killed her. Thank you. Come on, George. Yeah, sure. Goodbye, Mr. Blair. Goodbye. George, I bet he would have killed her. Yeah. After all she'd done to him? No. After killing Cecile? No. After trying to come back to the house as her no, own sister? No, 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 no. You see, a man can go just so far, and then his own censor goes to work on him. Don't you understand? A man can go just so far, and then his censor makes him stop? Yeah, sure. Well, as far as your romantic inclinations go, I can understand that, all right. Georgie, I got a big TL for you. Now, either you tell that censor of yours to loosen up and give a little, or you better start thinking of a few choice last words, because any day now you're going to need them. And if you can't think of any right off, well, you might say that uh, George Valentine is played by Robert Bailey, with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Don Clark directed the script by David Victor and Jackson Gillis, and that uh, pounding in E-flat minor was Eddie Dunstetter at work. I hope you'll save us some time for another visit with Valentine, when you will again hear what happens when you let George do it. (laughs) ¶¶ 